Hi, and welcome to the Tali Lodge podcast, where we discover spirituality together. We have Jeff back, and she is talk about Scorpio. Hi, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. Happy to see you again or hear you again. <laughs> mm, yes, I know it's uh, obviously we speak every month about every season. But for some reason, Scorpio to me always feels um like a sort of a strange season, like transformational and always things happening. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I mean, Scorpio is a very interesting sign as such, right? It, it tends to have a little of uh, bad rap because people, you know, they, they get the intense side of it, but they might not get the advantages of it. Oh, that sounds very interesting. So what are sort of the healthy expressions then that we can expect to Scorpio? Well, think of it like we think about the seasons, right? So when the seasons change, let's say when it's summer, then of course, you know, we have all the trees blooming and flowers and fruits and leaves and everything is out there, right? Mm. And then as we change seasons, the more we go towards the winter, the less it is about what's on the outside. And the more it is about the, the roots, how the roots are nourished, how the roots are getting the, the supplements, the nutrients, everything that the tree could, um, you know, survive through the winter and then to start blooming in the spring again. So uh -huh. that's very similar with the Scorpio. It is this point where we are after the harvest season in let's say Libra season right September October we're then going deeper we're going into the darkness we're going into the uh, deeper into ourselves and this is how Scorpio is related to emotional depth it's related to psychology uh, for example one of the key uh, questions that uh, people with a very strong Scorpio energy are always asking is why? Why is he doing what he's doing? Why am I thinking what I'm thinking? Why is, you know, this pattern or that behavior? So there's a lot of this willingness to get to the bottom, to the roots, into the depth. Wow. So it's, I can sort of see that I'm, I'm a Sagittarius, but almost sort of Scorpio. And my little niece, uh, who's four years old, she's a Scorpio. And often children under age are why, 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 but she is even more why, why, why. Um, but also, <laughs> if you tell her why it is, then she's like, well, I already know that, Auntie Laura. I already know this, Grandma. And then she, <laughs> she always thinks, you know, I know, even though she wants to know why, and then you tell her why, she knows everything anyway already. This oh. is a very Scorpio as well. <laughs> It's a mix. As we were talking, as we are, uh, you know, revisiting the same um, explanation from our episodes into the episode. And so when we are the mix of energies, we're not just the sun sign, obviously, yeah. right? And so when I say people with a strong Scorpio energy, that refers not only to the sun, it refers to, for example, Pluto is a huge denominator whether people have Scorpio energy. And Pluto is a generational planet, which means that all everyone who has been born between, I think, 1983 up until 1992 have Pluto in Scorpio. So that is already a huge portion of Scorpio energy, yes. right? Yes, including so a lot myself. Of my <laughs> exactly. A lot of my clients are also within this age bracket, so to say, and I can see why they have very healthy interest in themselves and also other people. And this is where we come into this healthy expression of, of Scorpio. They are, um, these people really like to understand, they really want to understand how other people tick, how they themselves tick, why is it? 
uh, why this emotional pattern, why this behavior, why this trigger, and so on, which is amazing, right? For the self-work, for the personal work, for the personal growth, it, it's amazing. Because, mm -hmm. again, many people are not even wanting to touch the depth or, or to go there, right? They, they close the door and they try to <laughs> kind of run away. Not the Scorpio. Scorpios are saying, bring it on. Let's yeah. see what's in there. <laughs> So that is the very healthy expression. And, and Scorpios are oftentimes called the detectives of the soul. Okay. And that's why many psychotherapists uh, typically have very strong Scorpio energies because they have the space and the capacity to not only go into the darkness themselves, they can also sit with other people in that darkness. They can guide, they can sit in the uncomfortable spaces, in the uncomfortable questions, in the rawness of our, you know, humanness and so on. So that is really, really a strong start. Wow. Yeah. So it's not about all about the sun sign. We have uh, the, our first episode was all about evolutionary astrology. So if people are getting a bit confused about how this works, then uh, we'd love to refer you to our first episode. It's all about it's it's a different type or different uh, direction of astrology because it's different directions, I guess. Uh, so yeah, thank you again for that explanation, Jeff. It's um, it's not just about your sun sign and it's not just about this month. It's about everything really. But for this month, um, what can we expect more for healthy expressions for all sort of all of us? Like what energy is around? Well, let's say that the season of Scorpio starts on the 22nd of October and lasts until approximately 21st, 22nd of November, right? And so when we all collectively are going through this season of Scorpio, we all become a little bit more introspective. We all become a little bit more deep, <laughs> whether we want it or not, right? And so, of course, uh, we're also going through some kind of, um, let's say, review of what is there inside of us, what is there in the darkness, and um, what is there in terms of vulnerabilities, what is there in terms of insecurities, what is there in terms of fears. And of course, on one hand, as a society, we don't like to go there, we don't want to go there, we rather want to, you know, have fun and play and travel and so on. But when we allow the space for ourselves to go and explore what is it in the darkness and to sit with this darkness, what is possible for us is the transformation. It's the almost this caterpillar butterfly metamorphosis when we can change forms, when we could, you know, lose something or let go of something in order to rebirth in the new, new way, new expression of ourselves. Ah, so it is a very good sort of um, like a time to look in the mirror type of thing. Like what does work for me? What doesn't? Do I let go of this? Do I continue with this? And is, totally. But is it also a good time to make choices or is it a thinking time? I think it's the time when the universe itself is trying to push us a little bit inside of ourselves. Okay, and then whether it's the choices time or thinking time that everybody decides for, for themselves, because they're obviously in order to, um, to let go of something, in order to be almost going through this, you know, process of death and rebirth, we need to start feeling. It's not so much about thinking, it's about feeling, it's allowing to, to really reconnect with oneself when, on a really deep, deep level. And so what is also interesting is that the Scorpio sign and season and this energy is not only about ourselves, it's also about um, our deep presence, deep emotional presence in relationships. So it is about intimacy, it is about trust, it is about emotional deep relationships, it is about sex, so it is about shared resources. You see, it's not only about kind of relationships on the superficial level, it's how we go deep together. How are we feeling safe? How are we feeling safe to open up emotionally, not to guard ourselves and so on? So as, I, as I'm saying, it's a very deep, it's a very rich uh, season that we just need to understand 
um, a lot of benefits that it brings and allow it to bring uh, to bring us a lot of benefits. We, with your help, we've got the Scorpio crystal set as well. And the crystals that we've chosen for that set, if you listen to this, I think it's perfect for everyone. Like not just the Scorp people with Scorpio energy, but even for everyone. If you look, for example, obsidian, it's very much like a protective stone, but also emotional support. So even, I guess if you have to dive deep, then you might get off balance a little bit because you may find things that you don't want to find. But then obsidian and uh, shungit as well are great, great to help. And shungit is also great for clearing blockages. And if you talk about the sexual balance, I mean, red jasper is fantastic. Sacral chakra, it's, I think for me, it's the strongest one for sexual energy as well and relationships. And um, it was viewed in the ancient time as blood, dragon blood or Christ blood, like depending on where in the world. So it's that deep, deep connection with being, basically. And I think that's um, the beautiful crystals for this season, I guess. Yeah. I support. I support that. And also, I, I support what you're saying, that it is not only for people with Scorpio energies. It's really for everyone during this season, for sure. Because uh, as you're saying, when we're going deep within ourselves, <laughs> we definitely find things we don't want to look at, right? And so um, I think it, it really helps when we have the tools, when we have anything that can help us to balance, especially when people don't have this deep Scorpio energies, right? Because mm -hmm. for Scorpios, it's almost natural to go deep and to ask you know, questions and to sit in the darkness every now and then and to be introspective. But for other people who are not that, prone and not that you know not knowing how to do that these energies can be a little bit heavy because um scorpio energies can be dark it can be about intensity right it's mm. intense always <laughs> if you have some if you know some people who are scorpios you would probably have noticed that they are quietly intense okay yes. they can have very intense uh, look or they can have this energy of some kind of magnetic of, or, or having having this internal power right so yeah it's good that we have the sets to to support everyone yeah I think that's yeah I think that they're beautiful crystals as well and how about the unhealthy expressions for this month where do we where do we have to be careful of Whoa, <laughs> let's go into it. Yeah. <laughs> now that we talk about darkness, but good that we started with the, with the goodies, right? Yes. Like we know now the benefits. We know now why is this energy so intense. Uh, it's because we're going deep in, into, the, into the well, let's say, mm -hmm. to reach towards the, the roots. But also what we need to be careful of or what we need to... Uh, yeah, just just know what can be unhealthy sides of, of Scorpio energy is, as we just um, mentioned, it's intensity, right? Intensity, sometimes even un unnecessary intensity, intensity in um, internal intensity or looking for intense situations or creating intense situations and drama for other people so that if we could uh, avoid that and uh, you know going in into the deep and dark places allowing the safety for for ourselves and, and another emotional safety mm -hmm. that would be something to uh, to keep in mind all right yeah then uh, when we talk about Scorpio, there can be some compulsive behaviors, some distractive passions, right? So that is obviously the siblings of drama and intensity. Mm -hmm. And um, the Scorpio is also about power. So these people, they might consciously or subconsciously look for power, the symbols of power, you know, the symbols of power can be anything. It can be the internal power within, like charisma, the power, like powerful people, can be social status, can be money, can be psychology. You know, when when we know psychology of people, we kind of 
I, I mean we by, by by we I mean humankind, right? Yes. So people, <laughs> people, some people that are not operating with integrity, if they are really good at psychology, they can actually manipulate people, right? Okay. So that is something to avoid. That is something to kind of catch. Uh, if we have it, uh, to to make sure that we are not misusing it. And then the energy of Scorpio can also uh, have some kind of the need of external validation, okay? So sometimes okay. people with this energy, they are looking outside of themselves uh, to find who can validate them. Another part to, to the story, um, since we were talking about relationships, is that there can be quite deep fears or, um, or insecurities when it comes to, to really deep emotional relationships, like fear of intimacy or fear to trust, fear to open up, fear to um, you know, stop guarding oneself. It, it, there can be a lot of defensiveness or, or defense around the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you think that it sort of expresses itself also to maybe closure with a couple? If both of them have Scorpio energy, do you think it could also result into maybe like a, a wall between them a little bit that one maybe is into going deeper and deeper, but the other one struggles with that a little bit? Do you think that could clash in the Scorpio season? It it really depends, I should say, because it depends on the consciousness of each person, right? And this is something that astrology cannot see. <laughs> we yes. can see a lot of things <laughs> in the chart. We can see a lot of, uh, you know, past life scenarios, this life um, lessons and so on. But we cannot see what is the consciousness of a person. If a person has already gone deep within oneself and they know that, aha, uh -huh, here is my insecurity. I don't know, insecurity that they are not worthy or not good enough or they do have fear to trust for example right the, the, the question is whether this person has it in in his or her conscious awareness or not and what are the coping mechanisms are they able to talk this through are they able to open up and to actually share it and say yes i do have this insecurity yes i'm scared to trust yes to show up in vulnerability. Are they mm. able to do that or they are not? And, and this is the, the, the only a, question. Yeah, that's the big question. Mm. I think it's going to be quite a, um, it, yeah, it sounds very intense, the Scorpio. <laughs> very, very intense. I think, uh, again, with our crystal set, we've chosen uh, Lebridite as well uh, in the crystals because that's really good for calming and compassion. So we're going to need those. And malachite is for mutual support. So that also probably is a really good crystal for like couples or people that live together that both have Scorpio energy would be really good to understand each other, to show tenderness and to show gratitude as well with those two crystals. So it sounds pretty perfect with these that we need. I love it these crystals for that i yeah. love it i love it absolutely and uh i also love that there are the the moons which are supporting as well yes. so one is the new moon in scorpio uh it will be around 12, 12 to 13 degrees and it is happening on november 4th and first of all it's a super moon so the super mm -hmm. moon what does it mean it means that the moon is um at the closest one of the closest points to the earth so if there are no clouds it looks super big it looks like huge <laughs> when Beautiful. you look at the sky you're like wow this is really close so that is nice and then of course it brings also much more potency it brings much more energy into this this um, new moon so new moons are always about um, beginning about starting something about planting new seeds and that is an amazing uh, start amazing time to uh, you know to set new intentions especially around those Scorpio themes right so what we were talking about the themes are emotional depth it's about power it's about psychology well the right use of power right it's about the shared resources intimacy trust uh, so the question is 
how can we do this differently? How can we approach it differently? How can we set the new intentions and you know, overcome those fears or overcome those insecurities or uh, being less guarded or being less manipulative. So a lot of those questions will come to the surface. And of course, there are quite a few aspects within this moon which are, you know, guiding us <laughs> somewhere, sometimes with the soft hand and sometimes with the some, you know, tense energies so that we would be actually pushed out of the, uh, of the comfort zone a little bit mm -hmm. and so uh, one of the main aspects during this new moon is that the sun and moon are directly opposing uranus and taurus okay and uranus is always about something unexpected sudden um something that we are you know we're not prepared for or we're not expecting so that that is a shake off there is a shake up because okay. again, we tend to stuck in the ruts, we tend to stuck in our comfort zone. So the Uranus is coming and saying, no more, let's do something <laughs> differently. Let's do something, you know, let's, let's move on to, on to the next track here. And there is also a T-square with the Saturn in Uranus. So um, the Saturn brings in more seriousness. It forces us to think long-term it forces us to take responsibility for our own emotional patterns. Um, it takes us uh, into the questions of what's the right way um, to connect with people, but also what is best for, let's say, for the group, for the tribe, even for humanity. Right. Is it best that I'm misusing my power? Is it best that I'm manipulating someone or not? Or is it better to to take responsibility for our own uh, inner world, emotional world, and to make, you know, to, to achieve the best version of ourselves. Okay. Wow. So the, it could be a very intense time, or it will be probably a very intense time, but there could be big surprises as well if when Uranus is uh, in line as well with the sun. Absolutely. I would say surprises and also transformation, because the biggest word for Scorpio is transformation. It's transformative, yes. right? And also with some of the uh, aspects that I can see in this new moon, there are quite a few aspects which are um, focusing on the Mercury, which will still be in Libra. And Mercury is how we think, how we communicate, how we learn things, how we share our ideas. And Libra is obviously about relationships. And so the Pluto squaring this Mercury in Libra, that already applies the pressure to transform, to transform the field of our relationship, uh, to transform the way we show up in relationships. How are we equal in relationships? And also it with, with some other aspects, which I'm not going to, to go in details here, what I can see is that we are supported into independent thinking and we're also supported to step into the healthy interdependence in relationships, right? It's not codependence because Scorpio, very often they are looking to merge with other people, right? To merge resources, to merge emotions, to merge, you know, fears or, or anything of the kind. And, and that might trigger unhealthy dynamics that one person is in power or, you know, having more power and another doesn't and so with this new moon we are learning and stepping into the healthy independence in relationships when we can be close emotionally but we're not necessarily uh, you know merged into each other in, in in forms of you know being glued to each other or, or being dependent on each other for financial matters or physical matters or for emotional matters it is the healthy interdependence here okay that sounds beautiful as well though that's very, it sounds almost like perfect. That's sort of what you want as well. You want to be yourself, and that, but not glued, not it too, is. too independent of each other. It is, it is. And what is the full moon going to do this, this month? Whoa, that one season? is, yes, this one is amazing because it's a full moon and also it's a partial lunar eclipse in Taurus 
uh, it will uh, take place on November 19, and it is in Taurus 27 degrees. So if you have your charts, you can take a look what it falls in which house, what's going on there. And it is a very rich full moon. <laughs> it's a very rich one. There, there are so many aspects that I, I, I won't be able to even unpack all of those, right? And because all it is also, it means that we're approaching the um, eclipse season, right? The eclipses are typical. They can be four to six eclipses a year. Okay. And uh, the eclipse season, it, it, it's always a turning point because it brings a lot of energy. It brings a lot of energy to, first of all, close the cycles, six months, you know, what we have been through in the past six months, and then opening up the, the next six months. Like It's like a little bit like a portal, so to say, okay? And so this uh, eclipse is illuminating a lot of things and providing an opportunity to close the cycles, as I just mentioned. And the sun and the moon are both conjunct the nodes, the lunar nodes, okay? So that is a big thing because uh, the sun in Scorpio is conjunct the south node and Sagittarius, which is more about our past. And the moon in Taurus is conjunct the north node in Gemini, which is more about our future, so to say. And so since um, this eclipse is illuminating those last degrees of the lunar nodes, because every sign has 30 degrees, right? And the uh, lunar nodes, they are uh, moving always from the 30th back to the zero, okay? So this is how they, they move. And so during this, um, that this uh, eclipse, because the sun and the moon are conjunct the nodes, they are illuminating. They are illuminating what we have been learning on this axis, what, uh, what we have been traveled through during the, the past one and a half years, because the south node and north node, they are changing sign every one and a half years. Okay. Okay. That's quite a long time. Uh, yes and no <laughs> it's both <Yeah. laughs> but it's it's enough time to review something right yes. so Sagittarius south note is that what we're doing collectively right we are letting go of um, outdated beliefs belief systems philosophies values righteousness religions anything that we maybe were conditioned to believe and during the past one and a half years, we basically were reviewing what is no longer serving us, what is no longer valid for us. And then the Gemini North Node is all about learning and letting in new information. Okay, so refreshing. Uh, it's basically updating our mental structures. Okay. Okay, but well, actually that sounds sort of how society completely is at the moment, isn't it? You hear a lot of people... Oh, since the beginning of COVID, which is roughly a year and a half ago, uh, I became more spiritual. I looked at myself a bit more, transformational. So that really comes in line with what you just said with the North and South nodes uh, in Gemini and Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. And yes, well, during this, this eclipse, we also have a lot of support from, from different aspects, both, again, <laughs> comfortable and uncomfortable, but it, that's a support in any case. We have the support from Pluto and Capricorn, and that is, again, it's the transformation. It's letting go, it's releasing the past, releasing the fears, um, and... Um, as, as we are saying, if the South Node is Sagittarius, we are releasing also those mental structures, also those, you know, beliefs, deep-seated beliefs uh, that, that are not serving anymore. And another part that I want to um, briefly uh, comment here is that Mars will be in Scorpio as well, and it is opposing Uranus and Taurus. And <laughs> interestingly, this Uranus is almost like a central hero, you know, it will be active until the end of the year for sure. In every single new moon and full moon that I was checking, it's always there. Like it, it's there, it's, um, it will be bringing some kind of unexpected events every single time, sometimes comfortable, sometimes uncomfortable. But in any case, what we need to keep in mind is that it wants us to grow. 
it wants us to, to stretch. It wants us to become the best versions of, of ourselves. And so again, we're talking here about some shakeups, unexpected events around power, around money, around shared resources, around intimacy, trust, so that we could review how we do it. But most of all, uh, we would also look um, into how the monetary systems are changing right now, because Taurus is about finances and resources, how we generate resources, how we work with resources, okay? And Uranus in Taurus is shaking this up, right? We can see it right now, all the volatility with the cryptocurrencies, how different countries are uh, making sure that the measures are taken, Le legislation is changed for the cryptocurrencies. Where is it uh, allowed? Where is it not allowed? Where is it now the national currency? So a lot of those changes, right? And with the support from the uh, Venus in Capricorn, these are the supportive changes to monetary systems and how we support ourselves, right? How are we might be independent in terms of how we, how we generate money, how we generate resources? How much do we actually need? Do we need an access or we don't? Do we need, uh, you know, huge debts just to make sure that we, I don't know, buying some leaders branded branded clothes or we just don't need it anymore, right? So with, with the... Support from, from Venus and Capricorn, we get to a little bit more maturity here. We get to maturity, we get to discipline, we get to practicality around money and also self-sufficiency. Because I can tell for sure as, as an entrepreneur, uh, I can see more and more people are becoming more independent in how they work and how they generate money. Even if it's just a hobby on the side, they are now much more self-sufficient than they used to be. So yes, this is what I would put, that would be my take on this full moon and lunar eclipse. Wow. That is, a, it is a lot of information, I think from a lot of different aspects. I feel like Libra was sort of, it was a bit of push and pull, but not too much, I find. It was still balanced, you know, it's a scale, I guess. Um, but then if you hear this, then I feel like this can go, well, it's not even push and pull, but it's push, pull, up and down, back and forward, left and right. And all kind of like an atom goes all directions. That's sort of how I feel about what you've just been saying. Um, do you think that's sort of an accurate description? Don't you feel like it's not the, all over the place, but it's rather going deep? Mm. There is a certain direction, but we're going yes. deeper, right? Yes. <laughs> I would say it might sound by the description of it that it's intense, but on the other hand, I would say we wouldn't be going through it if we wouldn't be ready. Yeah, that's very true. So an atom have, is, is a good description, but more into debt rather than how it behaves. Right? Correct, correct, yeah. correct. We have been going through so much during the past one and a half years that at this point we are ready. We are ready, ready to go deeper. We are ready to rework um, how we build relationships, how we generate money, how we change our values. We are ready. We I, are ready. I, I'm feeling it and I'm hoping that it is the case. Yes. I usually have the same thing um, as probably my listeners know, and you know, I'm uh, working obviously on a physical shop, hopefully. Uh, there's no guarantee yet, but I feel like I'm ready for it. I can handle it. I know how I want it. Um, it's just the last few huge steps uh, that I have to overcome, but maybe that's the time that it's all going to happen as well. Great. Great. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so Scorpio season, as we were talking, it's a little bit dark, it's a little bit nourishing, it's a little bit intense. So when we're looking for our own whys, uh, it's great to have some tools. So if you have um, interest in reaching out to me, I would be happy to hear from you and to offer an astrology consultation in evolutionary astrology to help answer your whys. That sounds absolutely amazing. As usual, I will put Jeff her details in the description as well. Thank you so much, Jeff, for the Scorpio season. I'm looking forward to speak to you next month. Thank you so much, Laura. Speak Thank you. you so Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to the 
Learning a Lot podcast. Next week, we have Carrie Palmer talking about following guidance.